Okay, next up, iterables and iterators. Okay, so we've already seen that the for loop works different in Python than in many other languages. So for example, instead of just having indices, I can loop over a list, for example, the list one, two, cheesecake, and the this variable is not an index, but simply gets becomes the first, the second, and the third element. And as a matter of fact, I can not only loop over lists, I can also loop over tuples, over dictionaries, over many other things. And I can even make my own objects that can be iterated over in for loops. Okay, and objects that can be iterate or iterated over in for loops are called iterables. Okay, and what an iterable does is that if I call the iter func the iter dunder method on it, it's going to return an iterator. Okay, so something is iterable if it returns an iterator if I call the iter function on it. Okay, and then this iterator is something which I can loop over. Right? So if we want to make our triple iterable, if we want to be able to iterate through this, through this for example, in the for loop, what we simply do is where we define the standard method eta. And in the case of a triple, we can make our life easy because we can simply use the fact that we know that we use underlyingly, we use this tuple nums and tuples are already iterable anyway. So we can simply forward this. Well, if we want to get the iterator of this, get the iterator of whatever it, the iterator for the tuple is. And now we can loop over our triple. Okay, so this iter magic, magic method is what makes an object iterable. And this iter method, uh, the iter function calls this method to get the iterator. Okay, so now an iterator is something that returns an, an iterable is something that returns an iterator, if we want to. What is an iterator? Well, an iterator is simply an object that implements the dunder method next. All right. And what the for loop does under the hood is continually calling this dunder method next until there is a certain condition. Okay, so imagine we want to make an iterator ourselves. For example, we want to create our own range function. So we have to make this an object. So we have to define the constructor and we, as I said, the dunder method next. And what this my range function does is that if we call it, we need some argument and it's going to store this argument. And every time we call next, it's going to increase this self.i, which is the index, until it reaches our maximum for our iterator, which we defined when constructing it, so when calling it, for example, my range 2, n is 2, and every time we call next, this internal index is going to increase is going to be increased by one and this is and it returns the value of the index until we reach our limit and then and this is the behavior python expect from iterators it raises stop iteration okay so if we make an object a equals my range with the argument two we can call next on this object and the first time we call it it's going to return one. And the next time we call it, it's going to return two. And the next time we call it, it's going to waste this stop iteration. Okay. And now the cool thing is that this is all that's done in the for loop. So I can for i in my range five print i. But I said, um, this so far is an iterator, not an iterable. So be able to, to be able to do this, we want to make an iterator also iterable. Um, and to do this, where we simply return itself when we call the dunder method iter. Okay, so to do this for the marriage function, sim it returns simply itself. So now it's also iterable and also iterators. Okay. And this, this means that now we can loop over it. So if I want to for loop over it, it calls this thing and says, I want the iterator from you. 
and then it returns itself. And then Python knows, okay, now I have something which is an iterator. And because it, I know it's an iterator, I know I can call the next dunder method on it until it raises a stop iteration. And then the for, the Python implementation of for executes this until it reaches a stop iteration and then catches the stop iterations at the end. So now I can loop over my own object, my own iterable and iterator. Okay, so Python relies heavily on these iterators and you should actually use them every time Python offers them. Okay, so in other languages, this is what you would normally have. Okay, so this is how the same thing would be done in Java. So I would have an index which loops over only the value zero and then the value one and then the value two, and then I can get um, with the values of my list at this position. But this is unpythonic because Python has this concept of iterators and this concept is really, really helpful. So use the iterator directly instead of looping over the a list of indices and then calling the elements of the list at the certain index, use the iterator directly. All right. Okay, then there's one last thing worth mentioning about iterators and that is that they get used. Okay, so if I write a equals my range five, and then I call next on a, well, the next time I'm gonna call next on a, it's gonna return two, right? But also if I now loop over a, so for i in a print i, it's gonna start from the two because this is the, so if I'm not instantiating a new iterable that makes an iterator every single time, but here um, I already made it an iterator and now I loop over this iterator, well, this iterator is now at the position, so because this very iterable is also an iterator, it returns itself when we call the iterator, and well, in this self, in this instance of the object, the i is already a bit further. Okay, if I, if I create a new one every single time I loop, then that's fine and I can simply, well, every single time I call this, I'm gonna create a new iterator. But if I just use the same one over and over, now it's a two and if I call it again, there's nothing left because the iterator is now used and I have to create a new iterator from my iterable if I want to reuse it. Sometimes you actually want this behavior and it's really useful.